So, you're looking for a G-Shock. But you want something that's a little less digital and maybe a little more analog. Well, stick around. I've got something to show you. Hello and welcome to Infinite Kronos. So the G-Shock you might be looking for is the G-Shock GAB2100 series. It's better known as the Casioc. Now, this watch packs all of the ruggedness and the features that you come to know about the G-Shock and expect, but it also adds the simplicity of a simple three-handed watch, well, in this case, two-handed, without sacrificing any of those roots. Let's take a look. All right, let's cover some of the specs here real quick. This is a 45 millimeter case and lug to lug is 48.5 millimeters. So it's a pretty large watch. Uh, the thickness is only 11.9 millimeters thick, which is really good. You do have a mineral crystal and you do have the entire thing surrounded with a resin case. Inside the uh, watch itself, it is powered by the Casio module 5689, which then the module is protected with the carbon core guard, which further protects the watch. You do have 200 meters of water resistance, and this only weighs in at 52 grams. And you, of course, have the tough solar, which is recharging the battery, and you do have Bluetooth connectivity. So a little bit of background on this watch and then I'll get into my review of it. So the GAB2100 was released in 2022 as an update to the original GA2100 series. Now, the updates really just include the addition of Tough Solar and Bluetooth. Now, if you follow luxury watches or you know anything about luxury watches, you may have picked up on the really uncanny resemblance this watch has to the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. Now, there is no intentional resemblance to the Royal Oak. In fact, the Casio design team has stated that they were actually out to create an analog digital version of their DW5000, one of their earlier designs. So the watch itself wears really well, and you don't even really notice the 45 millimeter case size due to the lugs themselves being turned down, and that allows it to lie on your wrist a lot flatter and hugs your wrist a lot better. Now, the thickness of the 11.9 millimeters is really, really very barely noticeable. This is really not much more than a standard mechanical or an automatic watch. Uh, and you still get all of the G-Shock protection built into this. The buttons themselves, as you can see here on the side, they are recessed into the case. Now, uh, this is most likely due to adding additional protection to the watch itself. However, with the buttons being recessed, it does a really good job of not taking away from the overall case design. And it really does make it look a little more streamlined. The case flows very well into the integrated resin strap that you see here on both sides here. It's really nice. It flows really well and it kind of gives it a kind of a more complete look. The resin strap is extremely pliable and feels very, very comfortable on the wrist overall. Now, the one thing I did not necessarily like about it is this plastic buckle here. It is just plastic. Um, I really felt that maybe this could have you know, maybe a nice uh, steel uh, buckle and tang here. Uh, that would have really been a good touch. And you could have put that in BVD or PVD coating and make it like a black color. The resin strap um, is also fitted into the case in such a way that, you know, you don't get much flex. The watch itself does not lie flat. Uh, this is due to the main reason that if you do drop the watch for whatever reason, you know, the uh, resin strap will take the uh, initial impact on that. Also, the case and the carbon core 
obviously provide superior protection to the movement inside. Now you will also notice that the case itself is just slightly elevated above the crystal. Obviously this is to provide uh, protection for the crystal in the event that the watch falls uh, flat uh, on, the, uh, on the face of the watch itself. Um, <clears throat> The case itself here, let's go back down here. The case back is screwed down and it is stamped with the usual things about the Casio itself, telling you about the module, the carbon core and all of that other stuff. The watch pretty much features the standard things that most of these Casios do. It includes a, um, other than the solar and the Bluetooth, you get the uh, world time, which I believe has uh, 31 cities to choose from, standard stopwatch, five alarms, countdown timer. Um, so usually the standard things that come with watches like this. Now the Bluetooth is really nice because it allows you to pair the watch with the Casio app and doing that will allow for synchronization. Um, and it really helps in time setting. An example could be like if you went into a different time zone to a different city, as an example, uh, when your phone changes its time accordingly, the, the watch will then in turn update itself when you open the Casio app. Um, it will also, the Casio app is very, very good at allowing you to do other things, set the watch, set the time, set a different time zone, set a different world time. You can even set alarms, much easier reminders and so forth. So um, that's, that's also really very good. The dial face that you see here, pretty much the entire dial face is the solar panel. So that is really, uh, really good. Uh, the hand on the left that you see here will kind of tell you that the mode that you're in. Uh, it will also tell you the level of the battery uh, at that particular time. So it's got a high, medium, and low. Um, <clears throat> now, what you want to do initially when you get the watch is you want to put it in the sun for a few hours to get a full charge. Now, once it's charged, it'll hold a charge for about six months. So now <clears throat> let's talk a little, about, little bit about this negative display here. Okay, first of all, it's pretty small. And I'm just going to say this. I, I myself personally have some difficulty making out negative displays. Um, but I really like the watch and I like the whole blackout aesthetic. So that's why I picked it up. So even in bright, bright light, um, this can be kind of hard to read. Uh, the other thing that you should probably know about this watch and pretty much, I think kind of all Casios, the loom on these watches is not very good. Um, it's really, and it's really in this case only applied to the hands of the watch and it fades out very, very, very quickly. Um, it does have an LED light on it, which allows you to read the watch at night. So what are my thoughts on this watch? Well, I think it's a really good watch and it's a Casio G-Shock and you can get it at a really good price right now on Amazon. But before you go off and make your final decision, let me give you some of my final thoughts about this watch. What didn't I like about it? Well, I didn't really like the loom at all. It's just not very good. I was expecting for a G-Shock that it would have a lot more loom on the hands. Now, you could argue that you have the LED backlight, but I would then say, well, shouldn't I be able to use the watch without the LED backlight if I need to? What if I don't want to use the LED backlight? I'm kind of stuck in using that LED backlight. So that's one thing I didn't necessarily like. The other thing was the negative display in such a small space. I felt that it would be easier to read or that the numbers would be a little brighter, but they weren't. So that became a real problem for me. Now, I understand I'm the one who bought the watch with a negative display and I get it, but I would just think if I was gonna make this decision the next time, I would probably opt for the positive display. I think that would just work a lot better. Now, putting those things aside, what did I like about this watch? Well, it's a G-Shock. And G-Shock shocks are absolutely incredible watches. They're very iconic. You can see them on the wrists of pretty much everybody, from first responders to athletes to even celebrities. The other thing I did like about this watch is the actual design of it. I thought the actual design was really, really well executed and 
just done nicely. The fact that it's paying homage to its own DW5000 series watch, I think is a really great idea and a really great touch. The other thing I really liked about this watch is the Tough Solar. Having it being able to recharge by putting it in the sun is a fantastic idea. And let's not forget about the Bluetooth connectivity to this app, to this watch. It is, it is really great. It is highly functional and it really helps in setting the watch and working with the watch. Now, past that, I think overall, again, very, very good watch. I'd like to know what you think about it. So why don't you leave me a comment below and give me your thoughts on this. And while you're there, please consider leaving a like and subscribe for more content like this. Before I go, I just wanna say thank you all so much for subscribing to my channel. I really couldn't have done any of this without your support. Thank you so much for watching and always know how much I appreciate your support.